Good evening. Um, tonight I'm going to show you a little project I've been working on. Um, being young and a uh, uh, full-time employee, I don't have a lot of time, but whenever I get a moment, I like to work on this thing. This is a um, about a 1900 um, Cincinnati tool and cutter grinder. Um, not entirely sure on the date because I don't want to get to those really old ones. There's not a lot of literature available and it, it pretty much just have a, a range that it could have come from. Um, but I'm just looking at some machines that would have been uh, uh, predecessors to this one and then the ones that came out later. I'm, I'm pretty sure this one was around 1900. Um, like I said, it's a tool and cutter grinder. Uh, these early ones um, they had some nice features to them and they were almost essentially just a universal grinding machine. You could do cylindrical grinding, you could do surface grinding, all, all kinds of things in, in a small envelope. Um, this one was extremely wore out when we got it. It's missing a lot of parts. Um, I kind of took a, a liking to it and decided I was going to save it, which is going to involve, um, getting the, uh, the ways re-scraped. Um, is, uh, we got the, this, this, the top of the knee on it was beat up pretty good. It had a lot of wear to it. It actually had kind of, kind of a, a dish to it. And then on the very end here, there's a lot of damage where it kind of looked like they were using it like an anvil. It's supposed to have some covers on it, but those are one of the things that's missing. And so, um, of course rough, rough scraped it in. And then one of the first things I did was, um, once I kind of got a reasonably level was started trying to see, okay, how square is it? Because you know, more than making this thing flat, it needs to be it needs to be square with the rest of the machine. And so I'm using that, that round column there as kind of my baseline that I want the top of this knee to be square with the base of that column. And so I set it up with that down there. You see that little straight edge and a, a V block, and use that off the top of the column uh, with an indicator on a on a sliding base to kind of see. How bad it was and about at its worst it had about a, a, a six thousandths drop that would kind of drop down as it went away from the column and so I step scraped on that and got it better it's not perfect but I think it's going to be good enough for what this machine is designed to do and um, so now I'm back to where I'm trying to get my uh, my surface um, area covered on it and you see where we do have lots of blue coming on here Still kind of roughing it in though, as you can see on those edges, it's still pretty kind of blank. And then over here, there's a, a, a low spot. You can see that in the reflection, but kind of that, that back six inches there still has a, a low side. Um, I've been, been mainly doing the, the bulk of this hand scraping because uh, that's all I had. Um, but uh, surprise, surprise. Got a new toy. Um, initially, I thought I'd never be able to afford one of these, and it's kind of those things where when I had the money, uh, they, I didn't really see any of them out there. And uh, when I didn't have the money, that's when all the good ones were, were out. So uh, finally, I kind of, I guess you might say I settled for an old blue one. Um, but I like it. It's, it's got, a, I think it got a lot of life left in it. Um, when I got it, it was pretty pretty ratty looking. The paint was uh, chipped and scratched up, and the, um, the bearings in the uh, in the motor were kind of starting to squeal. And uh, so I got in touch with uh, Ed Dijek up north. Uh, he's a uh, or kind of one of the main uh, distributors for these guys, and I uh, was able to find out what parts are still available for this thing. I got uh, new brushes, new bearings, and then while I had a part, I um, gave a new paint job. And I uh, went ahead and polished up the nose on it, just kind of, paint was already missing from it. Fair might as well just make it look kind of prettier anyway, because so that's going to be a spot I'd probably just keep wearing off anyway. Um, but a lot of the big parts for these, you can't get anymore, but I was actually surprised. There's, there's still a fair amount of the smaller parts you can get. Um, you just got to be careful with them and take care of them, and uh, we'll keep going. Um, there's some wear in that front slide mechanism they'll have to address here. For too long, but in the meantime, just try not to take too many side swipes with it and uh, keep from scratching the work. Um, but uh, anyway, so that's the new toy. Um, using that to kind of finish this off now. 
Um, to blue this up, I don't have any uh, straight edge yet, but I have one on order, so that'll be another project pretty quick is getting that scraped in and start using that for my, my master on these things. And in the meantime, I have this little bitty surface plate that's just small enough that I can fling it around, and I'm using that to, in, to kind of blue up the top of these two, two rails here. Um, and so once I'm satisfied with my bearing points on this, um, I'm going to move on to getting the saddle, or the, the bottom side of the saddle scraped in. So that'll likewise have the proper bearing points, and I'll, then I'm going to cut some, some oil grooves in it, because this thing suffered from a lack of lubrication, and part of that was I think they didn't have a lot of points to put lubrication. So I'm going to try to fix that. So I think this thing has had a lot of refits over the years. Um, there's a lot of surfaces that have been cut down, and I really don't know how much they've been cut down. Um, but hopefully we can do a good job this time and it'll last a bit longer. Um, but anyway, once that the uh, top of the, the knee and the, and the underside of the saddle are nice and flat, I'll be able to work on the, uh, the sides of the dovetails. I uh, make sure those are nice and square and uh, making sure that the uh, sides of the dovetails themselves actually print up nice to, the, um, to their respective surfaces. Um, there's a lot of stuff to do on this machine. This is just kind of square one with it. Um, but th this is one of the parts of the machine that was the least functional when we got it. So, um, I think we've made a lot of progress so far. Uh, part of it was that this, uh, lead screw here, um, this was totally gone when we got the machine. Um, they had this, uh, kind of little bracket assembly on the front and they were kind of using a piece of all thread with a nut to kind of move the the knee maybe had like a one inch travel, it, it sucked. Um, but I got, I was able to recreate the lead screw kind of based off pictures and um, found that it was just an off the shelf lead screw with a, with a nut to match. And um, I was really lucky that we still had the, the handle, which was kind of a miracle because it wasn't actually on the machine. Um, it's just on the other side of the shop on a pile of stuff. And uh, so we get that back on there, created the, um, the dial there and uh and made a little cradle for the the nut to go on the bottom side of the saddle there um but anyway scraping it's fun um takes entirely too long but you get a lot out of it um so yeah electricity does make it better i can say that